Hey, what's up, Gerald 200? All right, so it's uh, week nine. Today's March 5th, 2023, and we're, we're moving forward here. We're going to get more into the kind of like applied wheelhouse of everybody where we're going to be starting to look at um, kind of economic and financial consequences of everything we've been talking about. And it's something that a lot of you guys are business majors, so uh, you should be thinking about these kind of things in terms of your career planning. And all of us um, uh, at some point have to prepare financially for retirement. So this is also very applied for each and one of you on an individualistic basis. Okay. Um, so th- what is it? Today is March 5th. Uh, what, what else is going on this week? There it is. Okay. We have midterm exam one that's been open for eight days. Okay. How awesome is that? How generous are we as faculty, okay, and as a program? And if I look back, okay, this was a reminder that uh, that, uh, Julia sent out, and that's, uh, 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 and with a little bit of um, kind of rah-rah motivation, uh, that's one. Uh, This is two reminders about um, uh, the, uh, the exam. Here's three reminders about the exam. Uh, there's there's a fourth reminder about the midterm being this week, okay? During my lecture, if you watched my video last week, I talked about the midterm being this week. Um, so that's five, six. Here's the sixth reminder about the midterm this, this week right here. And then this was a big reminder, the seventh and ultimate reminder right before we opened it up, where we gave you a study guide how to do it. So you guys, uh, 90% of you are kicking butt. And that's awesome. Some of you are approaching us in the 11th hour uh, because you've overcommitted yourself socially and you missed out for eight days, okay? And there's not a whole lot that we can do for you because we can't. it wouldn't be fair to the 99% that ha- have uh, planned well. So that's just the way it rolls, my friends. All righty, cool. So where are we at right here? So we are, um, we're gonna go into week nine, okay? And uh, and again, I encourage you guys to, you know, calendar all everything you see on the taskbar. So you guys have done the exam, you've done CT1. You see in April, you'll have the second writing assignment, okay? Which is piggybacking a lot about what we're talking about today, all right? Okay, so, you know, just you know, again, to, to look at how far you've come, you know, we set the stage globally. Uh, for the fact that um, uh, the world is aging, okay? And what that means uh, in terms of kind of the sociological implications, okay? Uh, We saw a lot of countries, old school, old world countries, industrialized, okay? Uh, um, Italy, okay? Uh, France, Spain, England, Norway, all these places, you know, where... um, the scale has been tipped, okay, and so uh, and so there, there is a significant um, wake-up call burden, as we called it, financially for these countries to fund the um, you know well-being and retirement of people that are living a lot longer than ever ever before in history, and so a lot of these programs that were set into motion to make for a comfortable retirement after 40, 50 years of working, they don't work anymore, okay? People are living too long, countries are going broke, okay? And then um, where, like in our country, with with the majority of responsibilities thrown on our own shoulders, people are going broke. And it's creating creating a major social problem in in terms of poverty when people get older and are in retirement age, all right? All right, so we set it up here. We talked about our our um, our very own country and the Pew analysis. We looked at um, why aging sets us up for so many of the diseases that, um, as we'll see later on, create significant financial problems and burden for people just because of you can't work because you're suffering from these conditions that we look at here. You know, the big three of cancer, diabetes, and vascular disease, Alzheimer's whatever, you know, whatever uh, uh, biological disease is is hitting you hard. Um, The cost of all these, the out-of-pocket expenses, okay, and it eats away at your monthly assets that you have. And we're going to get into that deeper, okay? We see that uh, when people get into the end stage and need help, then there's an extra financial burden 
that happens to you individually, okay? Are, are you going to be there um, caring for your parents and grandparents? If so, then you're not going to be working, okay? If it's totally on your parents and grandparents' shoulders, then they're going to have to dip into all their assets. And that means there's less money for you to inherit, okay, uh, um, in terms of estate planning. These are all things that have to th be thought about, okay? And then ultimately, if you're compassionate and your parents and grandparents burn through all their assets, what are you going to do? Okay. All righty. So these are all things that we're going to be talking about in today's lecture right here. Some of the economic and social implications uh, that are happening globally with aging in society. We've we'll sticking this right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll look at a, a, a brief article right here. And it kind of sets the stage. A lot of it is review, which is awesome. because You guys um, are, have been well prepared in this class. We're going to get a little bit more into the economics. Um, and then we'll look at some case studies in this really cool NPR article, all right? And we'll go over that together. Uh, I always advise you to open your quiz in a separate window in your existing browser, browser or open maybe multiple browsers. And then we're going to have you uh, do a discussion here where you're looking at uh, what's really, you know, maybe your parents and grandparents are looking at and certainly what you're staring down the barrel of. And that is you're going to be expected to work a much, much longer period of your, of your life, okay? Um, Social Security may not be totally there for you as you get older. Medicare, Medicare may not be adequate for you as you get older, okay? And um, so you're going to have to be in the job market maybe when you're 70 years of age. And um, and it's it's tough. People, you know, people are losing their jobs. People are underemployed, okay? Okay. Um, and so this can accelerate much of the aging diseases because of the stress that we've talked about. And this is just something to think about here. This right here was a, a video that was taken in, to, that was done during the, the Great Recession, okay? So it's a little older, but it's completely applicable to current world, okay? People are losing their jobs. Um, what little savings they had, they burned through. What are they supposed to do? You know, how are they going to compete? And this is an amazing video that you all have to watch. Um, and um, they actually uh, speak to a large segment of um, uh, retirement age people that have been forced to go back and do significant manual labor, okay, that is really difficult for them to do just to finance um, their you know, retirement years. Some people lost their jobs pre-Social Security, pre-pension. They have to finance what they're doing. They talk about this one guy that works at a beet factory. And then they talk about um, so many Americans that are living in RVs, older Americans, retirement age Americans, because they can't afford rent. And it's the basis of that, that movie, Nomadland, that uh, was pretty phenomenal. So check this out and then address these issues. You guys have to come out and think about people, uh, plans, that, you know, think about what's going on with people, all right? In terms of having to forego healthcare coverage, um, not paying for dental insurance, forgoing basic living expenses just because they 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 um, they don't have the finances to do it, and, and they have to choose. And that's what this is all about. Okay, I want you to watch these videos and think about it. Come up with plans. Think about you know during COVID what went down. You know this is all tough stuff. All right, very cool stuff. So let's uh, let's go ahead and, and and look at this article, and I'll kind of walk you through it. All right, so we're downloading the PDF right here, and there it is, okay? So like I said, this this is an article, okay? Um, it, it It's looking back in time, but still the, the basic issues um, are, are hold true right now, all right? And it's a great article and a really great journal, and so this, so we're, this is why we're still holding true to this. So if we look at this article, um, it was published in 2014, so it you know, it'll be coming up on... 10 years next year, but it's still a very great article. And so then it looks at you know, some of the issues, the big, big ticket issues, okay? And um, we're looking at this, you know, globally, okay? And um, how countries are having to reconsider their financing of retirement, their pension systems and healthcare provisions, okay? And remember, we looked previously at, you know, the gross domestic product. So was, this was, you know, if I want to kind of fire back here, we'll just kind of go backwards in time. Um, and we're going to go right over here. And I kept talking about, you know, the, the GDP in a previous chapter. Okay. And um, 
I believe it was this one right here. Okay. All right. So we were looking at how our country stacked up in terms of financing and 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 um, and the gross domestic product, and it was right in here. Okay. So um, we're looking at expenditures. Okay. And um, you know, and in and, and again, this is looking at. Um, uh, health and social components and a percentage of the GDP and how we were at such a low amount, okay? This is a, a negative two. So the, the GDP is, is how many goods that you're selling. Uh, when we sell things, okay, when the economy is rolling, then, then the government does better, okay, because they have their percentage that they take, okay? Outgoing is, is paying for social services, okay? And we are at the bitter, bitter low end of this. We saw this with in terms of child care as well, all right? So um, anyway, so we were just kind of, you know, stacking the deck back then. That was we last week, and then we can go back in here and we'll look at this week again, and we're gonna go back to that article, all right? So we're gonna go back in here, all right? And then I'm gonna go back to the article we were looking at right here. All right, so, so it's a big deal, okay? So as we know, by 2050, uh, 2050, sorry, there's going to be the same number as old and young people, okay? Two billion people age over 60, okay? These are just crazy numbers. And uh, that just means we have more people and less people paying into the system that is supposed to fund their retirement and well-being through social services like Medicare and, um, and, and Social Security, all right? So uh, this goes through uh, the sequence. You know, we talked about this earlier on globally, you know, which countries are going to see things earlier. And we can see that, um, of course, Europe is happening. It's old world countries. It's happening earlier. North America, Latin America, Asia, boom, boom, boom. But it's all happening. OK, so a lot of these other countries, other parts of the world are kind of looking at us for, for, for solutions. And we're not, we're not well set up very well at all, okay? So this is looking again at the distribution of age group right here, that's something we've talked about. These are the younger people right here, zero to four years of age as a percent of the population, okay? Or in this case, we're looking at uh, the population in millions. So there's two different ways of looking at this. So this is looking at the population in millions right here. And, um, Remember this, guys? All right. This is the, you know, again, the working age population right here. And then these are the dependents right in here. OK, males and females. OK, we see uh, differences. Women live longer than men. We see, see this right here. And then we see how the everything shifts. OK, right here. So you see as a percent of being supported by the working age population, there's more and more older, per, more older people and less people in here funding it. OK as on a percentage basis, all right? So what's going on? We talked about the drivers, okay? So it's taken much longer for you guys to get your act together, okay? So you're either not gonna have kids, or if you do have kids, you're not gonna replace the population. So there's a lower fertility rate, okay? Childbearing has gone down, all right? So we see that right there, okay? You know, and um, what is that, what, what, why is this happening? Okay, so they're talking about, we, we see these, these shifts in the labor market here. So this is more business uh, associated right here, which means you need more and more and more training to achieve um, the ability to qualify to get a job. So you're gonna um, to delay what's going on in terms of finding a spouse and get in having children, okay? We see this falling mortality rate, uh, falling mortality rate as well. Okay, so people are living longer. Yes, we had a little blip here. Okay, and we saw um, a, a decline in um, the uh, the uh, longevity over the of the the world over the last couple of years because of the pandemic. Okay, but the life expectancy, um, if you exclude the pandemic. It's going up and up and up and up and up, okay? People live longer. We see this increase in life expectancy. We're going to see a lot more people over the age of 100. We talked about Japan, all right? So they're seeing this earlier. They saw the decline in fertility earlier. The people live longer in Japan because of they have really healthy lifestyles, and now they're having big social implications, Okay. Um, in terms of labor markets, they can't. They don't have people to um, to get things done in their economy. Um, 
social interactions okay that means we um you know there's a shift okay uh there's a greater expectation for the children to do the caregiving and the older people and um and there's fewer people to do this okay all righty so um so we see this persistent low fertility rate okay uh, low replacement rate in the population, longevity, okay? And th this, is, this is like a crash course, okay, with these two converging, okay? And uh, we see up here, they talk about, um, you know, the, um, uh, the behavior that we have to have in households, the adjustments, okay, in terms of saving money, okay, in terms of labor and productivity and running businesses, there's fewer younger people. We're going to have to hopefully hire older people. Um, and then ultimately, when you look at a country like ours, uh, what we have to do is you have to invest in your own capital. You can't rely on the government to fund these this extended years of retirement. So these are these are really tough tough times, you know. And, and the world is not really ready for it. Okay. Um, they talk about the, 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 the effect on the business side here, uh, labor markets, okay, and the demographic, dem, demographic deficit. What does that mean? Okay, we see right here, this is, you know, the overall fertility rates. And in, in, in the most advanced countries, you have low fertility rates, right? So you're going to have to then, uh, it has, you know, big economic effects, okay? And we see over here um, um, the uh, um, the macroeconomic effects, okay, in terms of this change of economic of age composition, is uh, is that um, uh, we we're gonna you know traditionally you rely on younger people to drive the economy. We don't have those younger people, so then what happens is you start having to re, um, uh, rely on a labor force that's outside your country, okay? And we see this in our country, all right? So on both ends of the spectrum, okay, in terms of both blue collar and quote white collar. So, so um, uh, you know, uh, Silicon Valley, okay, uh, relied heavily on immigration because there weren't enough workers to do the coding and programming. So a lot of Im immigrants came from countries um, where people were skilled in coding, okay? And then we see it at the low end of the labor market as well, all right? There aren't enough people that work out there in the farms to do the um, going to the orchards to, to pick the apples and to pick the oranges to, to going out into the strawberry fields, soybeans, etc. So we had to have a lot of immigration for the low end of the labor market as well, okay? Um, is this sustainable? You know, it's really, really difficult. This is how you address it, okay? All righty. So um, they talk in this article, and then I talked about it in the previous week when we looked at the gross domestic product. Um, this is this group of, um, of leading countries, an organization of economic cooperation and development. And uh, these are, you know, all industrialized countries and, and, and how they're dealing with things. Okay. All righty. Okay, so we have migration, we have redu reduced worker replacement, okay? But um, on the opposite side, um, we have these people retiring right here and we can't fund it, right? So we're having trouble funding health care, we're having trouble funding social security, long-term care provisions, how are we gonna finance this, okay? And it's a huge, huge issue. We're going to talk about this, you know, in the in the coming weeks. Um, but um, it, you know, if we if we look, here, I'm just going to go back here. Um, you know, how's Medicare funded? This is from your paycheck. Okay, so um, we have these trust funds. Okay, and you know, if you, if you look at your your paycheck, you know, every single month you pay for a tax basis. Okay. Uh, Medicare tax and Social Security tax, okay? And um, the problem is it doesn't completely cover everything. So there is a trust fund. This trust fund is going to run out in 2028. Something's going to have to change in terms of funding how we pay for all the different forms of money. It is a subsidized insurance by our government, right? And it's running out of money. The other one is, of course, Social Security. We'll go into this later on as well. Again, um, we have Social Security taxes taken out of our paycheck, okay? This is the big one right here, okay? So, um, you know, 6.2% from my paycheck, 
I pay for Social Security, and then my employer, USC, pays the remaining 6.2%, up to $160,200. After that, no extra Social Security is paid, okay? Um, the one way to fund this is to, um, the proposal is to jump up to people that make over 400000 and uh, for those people, we're going to um, increase their Social Security tax rate, right? All right. Uh, because if you look in here in terms of how it's all funded, again, the, the, the issue is that um, by 2035, um, uh, we're not going to be able to fund things, okay? And that's when you guys are going to retire. And, and so so they, the only way to make it work right now is to decrease your payment by 80, uh, by 20%, all right? These are all huge, huge issues, okay? All righty. Um, so we saw the dependency ratio again. That was what I referred to earlier, and um, and a uh, big part of being a dependent is healthcare costs. Okay, societal dependence. Okay, and I'm dependent on you. Okay, um, to to help me in terms of this when you when you're my child growing up and I'm in retirement age. Okay, maybe I can't afford the out of pocket expenses to get my cancer treatment done. On and on and on and on. Okay. Alrighty, so there's something that has to be addressed, and you can, guys can kind of look through this, okay? Now, there's being a big, giant initiative, and you see this all the time um, when, let's say you're watching TV or something like that, um, there's all these wellness programs, okay? Whether it's Kaiser Permanente or it's Aetna Insurance, okay? USC, you know, promotes this. You know, in fact, I actually can go out and buy sporting equipment. Uh, I just bought a surfboard late, uh, uh, earlier this year. I can actually send the receipt for the surfboard that I bought and get reimbursed two hundred dollars by USC through my insurance plan um, to promote me exercising and, and being healthy. If people don't do healthy exercise-like activities, they and have receipts for it, they can't get that reimbursement. So there's this incentive, this initiative. The other thing that USC is talking about doing and you see around is we got to reduce our stress, we got to improve our diet, on and on and on. Okay. All righty. Um, this table is just looking at life expectancy at birth and healthy life expectancy at birth. And we see um, that uh, these are, again, this was, you know, uh, this paper, like I said, was done um, in uh, 2013. This is the cohort they looked at. And you can see that low income does poorly compared to high income people. All right. So, so, you know, money does buy access to better food buys access to, to free time, to, um, to exercise, and it buys access to activities that reduce stress. So it is what it is, okay? Um, so we have to address this social cha challenge, and um, that's what's going on here, okay? So we're going to delay life, uh, delaying life transitions, okay? Um, I'm going to have to work longer. You're going to have to work longer. But the, the, they talk about it here. A, a big problem that we're also seeing is that you guys – um, are entering the workplace much later in life, okay? Because that's just the way it is. People are, used to go to college, you were totally unique. Now you got to go to grad school. That used to be unique. It's not unique anymore. So it's harder and harder and harder for you guys to, to be able to get in there and make it. And that's something that, that you have to think about long-term, okay? Awesome. All right, so that's that article right there. This, uh, this is a really cool kind of case study article, uh, NPR. And it talks of, uh, it was done in 2019 about the impossibilities that some people are experiencing in terms of retirement, okay? And they go through, you know, the, the number of case studies. Uh, first of all, again, we look at, you know, these, these numbers that are kind of, you know, mind-blowing, kind of you know, just, just shake you, kind of shock on our wake-up call, okay? And um, so we see here now that uh, a quarter of people over the age 65 and older are, are still in the workforce, and they're doing this because, for the most part, they have to. We'll look at a couple examples here. We're going to look at um, uh, this one example right here. Uh, he um, is, what is his name? His name is Bob Orozco. He's 89, low-paying job, but he just wants to, to still be purposeful in his life. So he's, he does exercise classes at the YMCA. He has good retirement, okay? We see right here, 
Um, we're not reliant on, we don't get pensions anymore like, like we used to. Only government workers get that. The, mo the majority of us are all relying on how well we fund our re own retirement. You guys are going to learn about this. You're going to do it through your 401ks. Okay. And if you can't get a 401k, just through your own uh, brokerage accounts. Um, and uh, we're going to learn about how to do this. Okay. Uh, the problem is they are risk, okay? When there's a down market, okay, like we have they've had this year, then you can lose your value, okay? Um, during the, the Great Recession, these 401k accounts, they, they lost like a third of their value. That's when you retire and you're spending those assets, you're, you're in trouble, okay? We see here, like I mentioned earlier, 50% of Americans, okay, have been dipping into their assets to pay your college, okay? Um, we look right here. Uh, the median savings of, uh, this is the middle of the road, of people over the age of 65 is $150,000. And that's, you know, supposed to, you know, if, if you're 65 years of age and you're living on tier 90, that's supposed to, you know, that's a 30-year retirement. That's, it's not enough, okay? Um, we see that uh, um, in this time, uh, publications at a quarter, now it's even higher of our retirees, you know, approaching, uh, 30 to 40 percent of retirees, um, um, 90 percent or more of their uh, retirement income is based on Social Security. So it's a, it's a tough, tough time. So this is what you have to wrap your head around. So this you know goes into Bob, you know, and again he's doing this to be purposeful, okay, which is a great thing, okay. Um, uh, nearly a fourth American American workers say they didn't think they would ever retire, okay. More than a third of them uh, do stop working earlier than planned because of some type of disability, all right? Um, I like the engagement. It keeps me, you know, it's boring to not be doing something. So that's a big part of it. And I've heard this complaint from my friends that are um, retirement age who have retired. Uh, they think it's going to be great, but they find themselves kind of, lost a bit with the boredom so you you work as long as you can as long as you have the employment then we see down here um kind of the more worst case scenarios okay so this is um and we way back when we talked in the, in the first couple chapters talked about uh, widows and single women versus married people and, and you know how you're set up financially on average and his, this is the worst case scenario so kylie cohen here um she's 65 years old uh, she was divorced. She had to raise two children. She had kind of, you know, off and on employment. Okay, she um, she relies 100% on Social Security. There's there's Kylie right there. Okay, she luckily got government subsidized housing. Okay, um, and she makes right now. Uh, if you look through this, uh, she's making a little over a thousand. Uh, she's not making. She's receiving a little over a thousand dollars a month from Social Security. Um, most of it is going towards this government subsidized housing. And this is what she's left with on a monthly basis after she pays for her housing to survive on, $245. You know, it's tragic, it's tragic, okay? And there are lots and lots of people in this scenario. Um, this is her neighbor, same story, okay? Uses most of her Social Security for rent, okay? Little money coming in, you know, she has, nothing to rely on all right and then we look at people like um like uh, as we come down here uh this person right here okay so this is carrie eagle she's 70 uh, she retires with purpose so she does lots of volunteer work what sets her apart from from uh those two other women is that um she was a teacher in the public school system she has a pension system guaranteed income that is probably close to about a hundred grand a year. Um, and so she's very, very comfortable and it frees her up, right? So these are just really, you know, examples, case, case studies of what's, um, what's in store, all right? Okay, guys, so you come down here to the discussion. Again, um, I, we've kind of set the tables here. This is how we want you to kind of, uh, you know, uh, think about things. These are really, really tough decisions. We're very privileged people in our world, in society, okay? I'm doing well, you know, I work really hard. I started with nothing, okay? So I was, you know, the first of my family, my first generation to go to college, as was Julia, okay? Um, we had to take out loans and work all through our education. 
And we started real slow, but we came through at a time that we were able to achieve. And we, we got high, high level degrees and high level uh, careers. Not everybody's going to be that fortunate. Okay. And we can see this. And, and, and I want you to think about, you know, uh, again, over 50% of our country is really in tough situation. And, and so we're kind of getting into that here in terms of what is to be done. All right, guys. All right. Very cool. Um, Good luck on for those of you that are taking the exam tonight. Um, do well. I wish we could extend it, but I feel like eight days to get an exam done where you could have you could have fitted in at any point in time was more than fair. So peace, and we'll see you next time.